I, don't, I can't stop sleeping. Feeling tired all the time. Yeah, yeah. it makes me sleep really well. I do snore a lot as well, and she's even recorded me sometimes, and it is embarrassing. Yeah. I've overslept. It's so quiet today, like, you can't just go back home, go back to bed. A few hours sleep, and oh. I'm back, rearing to go. Do we live alone, or do we live? Yes, he lives alone, yeah. OK. The main things were, you were saying, with his sleep, and his awakening. All the other things, such as we forget our tablets. You remember to take your tablets, don't you? Yes. With normal sort of routine things, mm -hmm. it seems fine. What about things like cooking? Are you able to make yourself a hot cup of tea or...? You can make a cup of tea, can't you? Could, yes. What about food-wise? What? About yes, food? I can. I'm not saying that is not capable of using the cooker, but I'm a bit concerned about it. What about things like keys in doors, doors left open, us going out and wandering? A couple of weeks ago, he, he went a bit wandering because he'd been asleep. I think he'd been asleep on the chair and he woke up and it was 8 o'clock at night and he thought it was 8 o'clock in the morning. Oh. So he got up and went out. It might be an idea we get someone to come out and look at the house and see if we can put some aids in. Yeah. That can help. Thank you. Um, maybe having a carer come in just to say hello in the morning, but perhaps make sure that at least we're having breakfast in the morning. These kind of small things might be yeah. helpful. I'm happy to refer for, for an assessment for that. We applied for attendance allowance. OK. We were refused. I think there is, of course, a funding issue with social care. And what we are seeing more and more of is that we reach crisis situation and then we sort out the social care. Ideally, it would be beneficial both for the patient and, of course, for NHS if things were sorted out before we reach crisis point. Let's get the social worker involved. Yeah. Let's make a care assessment as well. Yeah. Uh, his communication's not... I've already taken the liberty of referring to a speech therapist. Yeah. That's already gone through. Have you heard anything yet? No. Unfortunately, with a diagnosis like this, it, it's not unusual for things to deteriorate with time. Yeah. That is the nature of the illness. Yeah. So what I would rather do is, instead of waiting for a crisis moment, is while we have got a bit of time yeah. to stop putting things and into that's place. What we're to do. But at least we've got the ball rolling. Yeah. If things change, let me know and we'll get thank that. You. I'm Dr. Wine, so if you come and see me every few months just to give thank me a heads up. Yeah, thank you very much. That will provide continuity of care, but also will let me yeah. know how things are going along yeah. and what services. Well, no, we that, that sort of helped us today because, yeah. you know, we were totally, didn't really know where to go from here, really. So. There's lots of things we can do. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, anyway. Thank you. It's lovely Thank meeting you. you. Lovely meeting you. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> I've got sports day tomorrow morning. So Max did the sack first. <laughs> he literally did about three jumps. Head to the deck. <laughs> and then as he's got up, he hasn't pulled it up properly. So it's about here. So he's got one. Hit the deck. I'm howling. He spent longer on the floor, he congrats. <laughs> Honestly. For the time, I'm not having any lunch yet. I know, I'm starving. <laughs> Only 190 calories in them donuts, did you know that? Come on in. Come and have a seat. Thank you. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. And you've come for the results of your blood test that you had done in relation to your diabetes. How do you feel things have been? Not brilliant a bit. Yeah, the sugar levels have crept up again. So I was looking kind of at your trend and actually over the last few years it's just steadily... Going up. Creeping Bad. up. Yeah, it's, it's now at 68. So, do you know what a, a normal, ideal sugar range? I don't take sugar anymore in my tea. 
you know, yeah. um, I eat a lot of fruit now. Uh, is that good or bad? Yeah, he's sugaring fruit, isn't he? You can't win, can you? Mm. It's so hard to know what you can and you can't. Yeah. I'll calm down and curries, you know. But yeah. Have the odd drink. Yeah. We can go through your diet and, and I can try and help see if we can sort of pick up on Drink something. waters? Is that yeah, key? I don't know. Yeah, ideal water's good. But an ideal sort of a non-diabetic sugar range is between 20 and 41. Diabetes is diagnosed at 48 and yours is coming in at 68. That's high. I've been on a diet all week. Cos once you get... It's the first three days, it's the hardest. I was a bit hangry. Oh, I couldn't do that, Gem. I have to eat, like, every few hours. I'm like... But you're tiny. I've put on nearly a stone. No. In the last 12 months... You haven't? Yeah, nearly a you stone. Haven't. Yep. Where? I don't know, but I have. I blame my partner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, usually when you start, you know, you're settling down and you're happy. Yeah. And I've drank more and I've gone out more, so hence why my scales have gone up more. Is it really bad that I'm hungry and it's only half nine? I'm always hungry. <laughs> the concern comes when the sugar levels are high is the damage that happens inside the body. As the sugar levels increase, that red blood cell has to carry more sugar. And what can happen is it can get to these smaller capillaries block. and it will either block and that's where you'll have the strokes and the heart attacks or it will squeeze its way through, and as it squeezes its way through, it will damage these smaller capillaries. So that's why we're keen. I'll have a leaflet on what I can eat and what I can't yeah, the best absolutely. thing, and I'll have a good go this time. Yeah, I will definitely. That sounds like I have to, doesn't it? Definitely. Yeah. I would be more than happy to kind of give you three months, and I'll um, go through your diet. So my target for you would really be to get these sugar levels below 60. I want them in the 50s. Yeah. OK. OK, no more curries, no more alcohol. <laughs> so, on a typical day, you wake up, what would be the first thing you have to eat or drink? Well, no, bacon, egg sandwich, maybe, cornflakes. So, yeah, a cup of tea or coffee? Tea. No sugar? No. Nope. And when would you eat or again? Probably about 3 o'clock. Yes, I had fish. With chips? Yeah. After 3 p.m., do you eat again? About seven, eight, I'll have a sandwich. What about uh, cakes or biscuits? Maybe sometimes. Looking at that now, what do you think that you could change that would improve? Well, the cakes, the fish and chips. You're right in terms of like your fish and your chips and drunky food. The only reason behind that is it's normally really high in what we call carbohydrates. Yeah. So when we look at car talk about carbohydrates, we talk about your bread, pasta, rice, potatoes, so any form, chips, crisps, starchy, nice stuff, unfortunately. Yeah. Breaks down in the body and okay. releases sugar. I'm not saying that you can't have it, but you need to be really careful about your portion sizes. What about exercise? Do a bit of do the walks and that. Half an hour. Right. No slow walking. No. Brisk walk. <laughs> I'll run out of it. <laughs> Heart pumping. Okay. Sweaty. Your body will burn sugar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's but basically more exercise, isn't it? Eat more vegetables. It's the best. Less target. carbs. Yes, low carbs. sugars and exercise. At the moment, it looks like there's no damage happening to the body. But if we leave it another five years, yeah, it's just. It's... Okay, Rosie. No problem. Or I can leg it, any yeah. problems and come back and see me. But I'll send you a letter in three months, blood test, come back and see me and hopefully I can give you some good news. Rosie, thank you. All bye right. bye, darling. Take care.